Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for Basic Sorgonomics, and we got a very uh, we're gonna have a fun here, uh, a fun one here this uh, Friday, uh, June nineteenth, twenty fourteen. And uh, actually, I I didn't have it. This is what I love. I, this, is what, this is a social and social media, guys. I actually came down here and I was really kind of brainstormed, you know, blocked and 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 didn't really know what to talk about. I pulled up the Periscope and I've been uh, uh, reading some stories uh, this morning over my coffee. Mm, hello. Definitely need you this early, early morning. Uh, but anyways, I, I didn't really have a story. But thanks to thanks to the wonderful Periscope people, specifically, uh, uh, one of the guys that does this hold up, I don't know which one is under the account. I think it's TJ is my guess, but I'm not sure. Um, anyways, so there was a story this morning about a, uh, in Germany, uh, apparently, hi TJ, uh, in Periscope land, uh, but apparently... In Germany, they had QR codes, of course, on their Heinz ketchup bottles. And I just skimmed the article, so I didn't get great, great detail into it. And uh, they had let the domain expire, and now it leads to a porn site. Whoops! Uh, which leads to kind of my... Cons- well, one, that's the first problem with QR codes. Actually, that's a problem with anybody doing anything with websites. But I can see that happening with QR codes, because... Because you got to think, a QR code could go to something very specific, right? Maybe you made another website, maybe it's for a campaign or something like that. And you, and somebody somewhere in a company that's juggling this, uh, it lets a domain expire. One, I don't know how a company like Heinz isn't buying a domain 10 years at a time. That just seems like it makes sense. Guys, it's like 15 bucks. You're freaking Heinz. Uh, I think you can afford it. Anywho, which leads to. The idea, why are we using QR codes? Okay, I get the concept, right? I, I, the concept, if you don't know what QR code, you, you've seen them everywhere. It's that uh, little block with squares and, 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 you know, you know, odd pattern of squares. It looks like one of those old, uh, those old uh, cross your eyes and it makes a picture kind of things, right? But it's not. Don't. I've tried for far too much time before I knew what the heck they were. Anyways. Anyways. I have a problem. One, everybody wants to use QR codes. It's not too great. Um, we actually use them. I didn't do this. I want to say I didn't do this. Uh, but in our Journal of Lifestyle Medicine that I assist with on the on the website for a little bit, uh, they we actually do have a QR code in there where I think I think it's on the podcast uh, page that he does because the, the podcast we do, he takes some of the best of and um, puts quotes and pictures and everything from them uh, to kind of support that and kind of, you know, keep, keep that connection online uh, after people have read the magazine. And he does do a QR code in there, and that goes directly to uh, in the episode he's talking about. Um, but, uh, okay, that's functional, sure. Uh, and then also I've been kind of miffed because I've been, I got a season past the Kenny where I've been going lately, and there's these signs all around that says, get 10, find out today's meal deal and get 10% off. And I go do the QR code, and I've tried this twice. I was wondering maybe they'd update it later. And it just goes to a page on their website about uh, about about uh, admission prices. That's it. That's it. They're not even doing that right. Not even doing that right. I should, I should probably tweet them so there's somebody's aware of that. I don't know. But... I, and then I see QR codes. I think you, the best way possible, maybe maybe I'm colored by the theme, but our friends at the uh, uh, Pennsylvania Coin-Op and Gaming Hall of Fame and Museum in uh, Aliquippa, up north of the city here, and we've had them on Awesome Chat talking about things, uh, they actually put QR codes on many of the games in there, many of the arcade and the pinball games in there. And uh, you can actually uh, QR code that, and it goes to a website with a little bit more information. Maybe it's, it's the maybe it's the uh, poster, the the advertising poster they they had for it, or maybe it is a little more information. Like I pulled up one, I think it was about the Tron the Tron pinball game, and it talked about how the the rocker there's like a there's like a vibrating force feedback effect when you play, and that's actually an aftermarket part. That, that you had to put in there, and it was only specific ones. That's a really cool use. Museums using QR codes is a really cool use. Now, here's my problem. I QR codes are not something that's native to most phones that I'm aware of. Maybe, I, I, I think some Android phones come with a QR code reader. I know for a time, if I pulled up the Google app, I could pull up a, a Google image search and take a picture. And that would work, but 
that function's been gone for a while, and that's Google. I still had to download Google on my iPhone. So like, I, there's nothing in the iPhone natively to do this. And I think there's a lot of people that see this. I, I, I have to think, and I have no market research. This is all, this is all anecdotal. But in my mind, who knows? There's no sign. Usually it's just a QR code. Let's scan this QR code. Cool. I'm grandma. I, I'm grandpa. Uh, uh, and, and I'm like, what, what am I? What is this? What do I do with this? So I think there's a tech savvy crew, which is some of us that maybe would just could easily type in the same address that's underneath the, 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 the QR code anyways, you know, that is going to find it, has that QR reader on their phone. Uh, the one I have is a mess because it has ads to pop up all the time. And I have I've never done too many things to, and some people don't encounter QR codes based on where they are. You know, of course, if you're in the city, you're going to have more opportunity, uh, just like with anything technological like this, right? So, and, and an interesting thought was brought up by TJ from uh, Does This Hold Up? Plug in the Periscope this morning, uh, saying, well, N NFC is underutilized. I agree, but NFC until recently has not been popularized and has not been, um, it hasn't been common enough, I don't think. I, I know for the longest time it was not in a lot of the Android phones. Now you're finding as of, uh, as of uh, the well, last year's iPhone, now you know it's going to be in there for the Apple Pay. Use this kind of stuff, and I'm not to get technical. I, I I can't recall if it's exactly the same that that they're using that NFC, uh, the same way in both both things that you could just have NFC and, and it works. Um, so, uh, and, but there's also, I think I'm forgetting another thing too is uh, eye beacons. I actually had a really interesting discussion about a really interesting new use for eye beacons. If you don't know what that is, it's a uh, Bluetooth low energy. Or I think it may be a combination of technologies that works with the iPhone. Uh, the idea is, and I think this is when you walk into, say, an Eaton Park rest restaurant, and you're on your iPhone, and it's on the in that lower left corner, you'll see an icon for Eaton Park. Or if you're near a Starbucks, it'll pop up in the corner, icon for Starbucks. You flip up from that corner, like you do the camera on the other corner, and it pops right into the Starbucks app. Or, or maybe your tab will pop up um, as, a, as a passport. I, I believe that is using iBeacons for the most part. Like they have something there in the store that broadcasts and you know and also it's something that can be used to kind of track where you are in a store. I believe Macy's was doing this. They can kind of see where you're going and, and, and your your kind of pattern habits and everything. Uh, so I think that is becoming what your and, and, and some Android phones will support it, I understand. So it isn't just limited to your iPhone people. So we do have competing technologies here. And I'm kind of interested that that works. And that's been catching on from the looks of things. And NFC hasn't. But I guess NFC is more like a tap of pay. It's kind of a very, very, very short. It's near field communication. It's what it stands for. So it is the when you're tapping your phone to the, the terminal at McDonald's. That's something that has to happen, not necessarily by a tap, I don't think, but has to happen that close, you know, within inches of that thing, probably. Maybe a foot, I don't know. And that makes the connection, and, uh, and yeah, or the little uh, the pay thing. I used to have a, a PNC or card or two came with NFC to tap the pay, and it was it was tremendous. I loved, I loved doing it. Uh, I don't know why. I think you have to get like the higher account in order for them to give that, that to you now. But it was so handy, so handy at the gas station, so handy wherever I could find it, uh, and 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 that was all. And and now I have to get a phone to do that. It seems kind of ridiculous in the long run. So let me know what you think. Are you finding any use of QR codes? Are you using your phone for pay for to pay for your Happy Meal at McDonald's? Are you getting annoyed by uh, every time you're downtown in a city, you just got Starbucks in the corner of your iPhone all the time because they're on every freaking corner? Let me know at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Sorgatron.com is where this show lives. Please subscribe to Basic Sorgonomics with Michael Sorg on all the all the places you're going to find video and, uh, and, 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 and the iTunes. Please definitely uh, subscribe to us. 
even if you're not using it, just hit that subscribe button. It helps people find us. Uh, it gives a little signal back to Apple. And please leave a comment, a rating at the very least over there, and that'll help people find it as well. And, uh, yeah, that's all I have for you right now. Have a great weekend. I'll be working. We're, hey, look, we're starting a new podcast. Uh, and I hope I have information for you about that uh, here in the coming weeks. And uh, until next time, have a good time. Have a good time. Really? That's all I got. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. 